constant risk assessment. And I am really, really careful and mindful about it. And I encourage my fam family members to be as well. The risk changes daily and it, it really depends on what's going on in your area. Listen to your public health people. Um, they're the ones who are staying on top of this. It's always a balance about safety and and versus, you know, living your life. Like my son is it's currently still in daycare, but our daycare is is very small and um and so the we you know we're weighing those risks i'm i'm very i just tell everyone every day almost to be very cautious there's uh being indoors is a lot more risky than being outdoors because being outdoors you have a lot more circulation of air um there's also the sun is actually quite good at inactivating virus i always like uh use my sense like where should I go or what should I do or what I should not do, even if I have to like go to grocery. So I think, is it really necessary or can I order it online? Well, I come into contact with people that are very high risk and I try to avoid those situations completely. So for instance, I um, visited my parents, but I didn't stay with my parents. We sat outside. Um, we sat eight feet apart, which, you know, is not ideal when I want you know, to spend a lot of time with my family. We don't move around in the community much at all because it's not very safe. And um, so we use Zoom a lot and we stay within the community here, masked and careful and so on. And um, we do a lot of Zoom work here and uh, we don't have groups bigger than five. and We don't have meals together anymore here. It's been a complete change in culture here. It's very difficult. Social distancing. We don't hang out with friends and we don't go to bars. We don't go to restaurants. We have been hanging out with some friends, socially distanced outside um, in small groups still. We're going to skip holidays this year. Um, so that's been really tough because my family is important to me. We're pretty close and I, we do Zoom meetings. Um, but it's, you know, it's hard to, to not be physically present. When you have bigger outbreaks, most of the time it was a wedding. And looking at the people at the wedding, it's understandable why. I mean, you, the music is loud, you talk close to each other, you talk to the bride and the groom, talk to everyone. So um, it's just very difficult and and so we decided against it i try not to go into restaurants i do a lot of the deal dash and delivery wash your hands you know clean disinfect things regularly make sure if you start feeling sick you stay home my kids are staying at home no school which is really painful and hard time for all of us and and like the 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 moment we decide to go out and they see the street, they, they become so excited and, and so happy. Asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transmission is a major factor um, for this virus. And so that's the justification for mask wearing. In the lab, we, we, we always uh, uh, wear the mask and uh, we're lucky we have some space. We can keep the social distance. I've always had a mask. And then I always keep uh, reminding them, like, wear the mask properly. What's more indicative of what's going on is the hospitalization rate. Um, and so, you know, it's clear that, you know, this is totally out of control again. We've decided that we're just not, you know, going to be celebrating Thanksgiving with other people this year because, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense um, at this point in the pandemic. During the early of pandemic, I try to talk to all my neighbors in the neighborhood, try to convince them that uh, to wear a mask. I think right now, uh, part particularly for parents, we can start to feel kids are tired, parents are tired, and everybody looking to go back to a normal life. And as a scientist, we can work in hard, but all the therapeutics, vaccine have their own timeline.